Cool. So uh, I was basically just going to show some random things. Um, <laughs> number one is um, recently someone who also works with me uh, asked me to write them like a custom app armor profile for a container, which um, this, these features have been in uh, Docker itself for a while where you can run in a custom app armor profile on the container itself, but nobody really does it because it's so hard to write custom app armor profiles. Um, they're like extremely complicated and not fun. Um, and the syntax is just really bad. So I was like, no, I'm not gonna write you a custom app armor profile because I wouldn't do that for anyone. Um, but I decided that um, that we could easily generate them uh, and make it our own config, um, something way more simple than AppArmor's syntax in general. Um, oh yeah, totally. Um, sorry, can you hear me now? <laughs> um, yeah, so I created this project um, called Bane. Um, so um, I can show you what a sample um, wow, that, my computer is freakishly slow. Um, so if we look at this um, sample, um, you just pass it things in the TOML format. I mean, we could easily do JSON, but I was like, oh, I want to try this hipster thing. Um, so <laughs> uh, you can pass like read-only paths, uh, log-on write paths, writable paths, um, allowed executables, denied executables. Um, so this one's just super basic for something like Nginx where you don't want to be able to like write basically anywhere and um, you want to log on when anything is written and just for fun, like denying um, Dash, which is usually the alias on Debian systems for SH um, and uh, top and uh, some network things. Uh, there's a lot more that I could add to this that's like factoring out a bunch of the app armor stuff, but um, this was a good basic one. Um, so just to show that this works, um, forget which server I put this on. Oh, yeah. Cool. Okay, so I have the same sample.toml here. Cool, so if I just do like Bane sample, it automatically creates the um, app armor profile that uh, generated from my config. So if we even go into like, etc. cetera, app armor dot containers, um, Docker Nginx, um, you get like the really gross app armor profile, but like, it's nice because you have this reproducible config that you can move anywhere. Um, so we can actually run this on a container. Expose the port so that we can prove that it still works. I also, just for fun, since I'm going to have to open Chrome anyways, I run Chrome in a container. So, <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. There's like this really weird race condition with starting it that I haven't figured out. <laughs> so, about half the time it does that. <laughs> Cool, so let me just grab this IP. So Nginx still works, even though we're like basically pulling everything out of it. Um, and then I can prove that other things don't work. Um, let's grab this container ID. Okay, so um, in the container, um, we denied ping, which was um, like network raw. So if I try to ping something, it should fail, lacking privilege. Um, if I try to like echo thing into fake file, it says permission denied. Um, top, we denied. SH, we denied. Dash, we denied. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, very legit in terms of stuff like that. Um, and like everything still works with Nginx. It's just um, only allowed like the perfect amount of things. Um, 
So that's pretty neat. That was the end of that demo. Um, and then um, I kind of became well known um, for containerizing everything. Um, so I figured I would show a couple of those because they're super fun um, <laughs> and super crazy. So um, like I said, like this Chrome is in a container and um, actually even like WebGL works with it. Um, I usually have something favorited for it, but of course not. Trying to think of which ones of these I've done before. I can just try one. Cool. So like um, this wouldn't work if it wasn't like rendering with hardware acceleration, um, but I can even prove it with um, the, yeah, so um, WebGL is hardware accelerated right now. Um, and if it wasn't doing that, it wouldn't be there. Um, so it's actually using my graphics drivers on my host, um, but they're mounted into the container via a device. So, I mean, this is one of the cool things that separates um, containers really from VMs, because you could never mount like your host graphics driver into a VM. Actually, I say never, but I don't know. I, I mean, I, I would be, have to be proven wrong to <laughs> be able to do that. But um, so that's pretty cool. Um, even sound works in a container. So we could do like. So it's pretty cool. It's like with mounting the sound device, um, which again would be extremely harder on a VM. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty neat. Um, there's a bunch of other things that I've put in containers. So um, Spotify even as a Linux um, app. And so this one's doing the same thing with um, mounting like dev sound for sound. And then um, the real like trick here is mounting the X11 socket for like the display. Um, so. Um, I have this like, <coughs> just kidding. Sorry. That's running a bit weird. Cool. So, um, I can prove that like sound works hopefully. So, um, yeah, that's in a container too. So really I don't ever install things on my host. Um, there's even some really um, crazy other ones like um, VLC, which actually uses, actually before I do that one, I wanna do, yeah. So um, I put this like Nintendo game emulator into a container. Um, so, it has like a few games already loaded into the container itself. Um, so we can just like try it out with Zelda. And like, it's just working the same as any other. And of course that's sound too. Um, and then VLC actually uses um, Pulse Audio. So um, I start a Pulse Audio container where it's really just mapping to Elsa on my host um, and dev sound is mounted. And then um, VLC uh, uses like a link pulse audio. So it's kind of cool in terms of like hooking two containers together. Um, so that will start with pulse audio and that, and actually I don't have any videos because I was cleaning out my computer, <laughs> but um, yeah, you can just trust me that it works <laughs> just like all the others. So um, yeah, um, that's, really all I had, but I, I'm willing to answer questions about anything about Docker. And then also if like you have anything weird that you want to see in a container, <laughs> I could probably show it. Yeah. So you can do this on a Mac. I personally have not because I do not have a Mac, but um, there's actually an entire thread on the GitHub repo where someone else found a hack through SoCat to have um, X running. Um, so you could do a lot of this on a Mac. I'm not sure as far as sound goes, if it would work, but I think that you can get sound to work in a VM so you can get it to work there.
Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you have any experience with doing that with an ID, like a big lift or, uh, or any other? Yeah, I put like our studio in one. Um, actually, I should put Eclipse in one and then run some of my old Java apps, but yeah. Um, I wouldn't, I actually run Vim on my host and a lot of people like, I think they think I run it in a container, but when it comes to like mounting an entire like home volume, I'm like, eh, I'd rather just run it on my host because that's usually what you'd have to do for it not to be a pain. <clears throat> Yeah, um, so it gets like super stressful when we have a lot um, and we get around like 200 per week and um, it's really just us and the maintainers like, going through them and our team isn't very big and the outside maintainers are probably like an extra 10 people on top of that. Um, so yeah, uh, Day to day, I usually just like wake up and look at the ones that I'm pinged on. And then if I have time throughout the day, I'll go through some others um, and like ping the appropriate people on them. But it really is like a team effort. Um, I don't think we could do it without like the maintainers that we have today. And I mean, there's absolutely no way that we could. Um, it's like the just the sheer volume of stuff that we get on the repo is out of control. And it will, and we, actually like merge so many per week. Um, my coworker wouldn't know the exact digits on it, but, um, <laughs> and we keep it like almost at like around 120 open at a time. So if you figure like that there's 200 coming in, then we're actively getting 200 through the pipeline a week. Um, so it's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't really, it's definitely a team effort. And we like each, I think just have our like, routine that we go through and it somehow manages to work. Have you written blog posts for one of those things? Like how do we learn how to do that? Uh, yeah, I have a blog post on this very thing with desktop containers um, on my blog. Uh, so there's that. I haven't updated it in a while with like some new ones, but yeah, there's also like videos from DockerCon and Container Camp. At Container Camp, I even showed Steam in a container. Um, which I don't know, I think that was a most cool one. Um, not the hardest though, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, yeah, so I wanna do that, but I wanna have X like running as its own um, container, which gets really complicated. And I've tried a few times. I think that actually Darren from Rancher either got it working or he's using a hack. And if he's using a hack, I want to get it working. <laughs> um, but he has like some sort of desktop Rancher OS. And since Rancher OS is all in containers, he must be doing something um, interesting with that. <laughs>